Well, it's Tuesday again, and uh, last week we started this series on wiring model railroads and the intricacies of running electricity to your accessories and your trains and everything, and we talked about the differences between AC and DC. This week I want to talk about, uh, again, we're just covering some of these really fundamentals before we get into the advanced wiring and stuff. But I wanted to talk about direct current because a lot of times that's what we're going to be working with is direct current, not alternating current. And we use that analogy of a hose running between two buckets in you uh, out of the bottoms of the buckets. And if you raise one bucket up, water's going to flow over here. So let's think for a second about a much more a much larger system that works like that, and that's the culinary water that comes out of the tap. So let's say we want to go outside and water the begonias, and we open the tap on the hose and water comes out. In this part of the country, the water coming out of the hose is coming out of a tank up on the side of the hill, and that's sort of like the bucket that, that we raised up. And depending on how high up on the hill the bucket is, that's going to control the pressure coming out of the, uh, coming through the hose. And so uh, if, the, if the tank were too high up on the hill, the pressure would be so high coming through the hose and coming out of the water main from the, the street, it would blow the water main and the street apart. It would vaporize all the valves in the uh, dishwasher and everything. We can't have the pressure too high. So they strategically place these tanks at different levels so that they can say, okay, water from here is going to go to there and water from here is going to go to there. And so that they've got a fairly regulated pressure that's going to everybody's house. So that when you turn on the tap and water the begonias, uh, a known pressure is going to come out of there. But that pressure isn't set by um, anything going on in your house or the size of your hose or anything like that. It's set by how high up on the hill the uh, water tank is. So uh, that's one aspect of this water pressure and that's pressure itself. How much downward force is there? How much pressure is coming out of the hose? Um, the, the corollary to that in electricity, because we're not actually going to be hooking up our railroad with a hose and running water through it, um, would be voltage. So when you're creating a power supply, um, there's going to be a voltage and that voltage is the pressure. It's the same as how high up on the side of the mountain the tank is. And so if we have three volts coming out of our wire, that's like you can put your thumb over the end of the hose and hold that back easily. There's very little pressure there. If we have 100 volts, that's like the tank is way high up on the side of the hill and you won't be able to hold your thumb over the end of that at all. You've got much higher pressure. One of the unique things about voltage or water pressure, whichever corollary we're using right now, is that that pressure is always there. The pressure is always there in the pipe even when no water's flowing. So if we were to take a battery, for example, and put a meter across it, it's going to show whatever voltage the battery is, say one and a half volts, even though no current is flowing. So sometimes we'll refer to voltage as potential because the current flow is potentially there even when it's not flowing. So that's one aspect of, of electricity, in this case direct current electricity, is what is the voltage, how much pressure is. Now, we're, as we're watering our begonias and we turn on our little half-inch uh, diameter hose, we find that not a whole lot of water is coming out of it because it's coming through a half-inch diameter hose. It's got good pressure, but we don't have a whole lot of water coming out of there. And the reason we don't have a whole lot of water coming out of there is we're running it through a very small hose, and that very small hose is, is resisting the flow of that water and creating a choke point there that's resisting the flow of water and keeping it from, from a whole lot of water flowing. And so we can think of that amount of water that's flowing out of the pipe and watering the begonias as amperage in electricity. So we can have a very powerful uh, power supply in electricity that's providing us with 100 volts, 
but if there's a choke point somewhere in that circuit that's limiting the amount of electricity that's going to flow, we're not going to have a whole lot of electricity flowing. The amperage is going to be quite low, very little electricity, even though it has a lot of power. And so the resistance to that flow is what's going to regulate the amount of electricity there. So we talk about uh, those three things and, and the way they correlate and the way they work together, voltage, amperage, and, and resistance. And there's this uh, mathematical formula called Ohm's law that will allow you to figure out if I have this amount of voltage and this amount of resistance, I should have this amount of amperage. Or if I have this amount of amperage and this amount of voltage, that must mean that in the circuit, I have this much resistance. So you can work it whichever way you need to. In the for what it's worth department, if we multiply the voltage times the amperage, that gives us uh, something called wattage. So when we talk about like our power supply that's going to run the trains, uh, we could rate that power supply in watts, simply meaning that this power supply is going to be able to put out, let's say, 12 volts maximum, and it's going to be able to put out one amp maximum and that would mean that that's a 12 watt power supply if it can put out two amps and that means it's a 24 watt power supply but with railroad power supplies we tend to skip that and just rate them by the number of amps that they can supply so we've got a power supply that's rated at putting out let's say 16 volts to the track and it might be able to put out one amp so um that wouldn't be a very big power supply. That'd be a pretty gutless little power supply that might be able to run a small HO train, or we might have a larger power supply that can put out, say, five amps. So five amps would be uh, substantially more. But if we were to put, let's say, I don't know, five big, heavy HO locomotives pulling a heavy weighted train, and we're trying to pull that, and these locomotives are each trying to pull two amps, and we've got five of them on there, and we're trying to run the whole thing with a five amp power supply. Well, there's there's too little resistance there, and the whole thing's going to overload, and the power supply is going to overheat, and eventually the circuit breaker is going to trip. It's just not going to work. We would need to get a bigger power supply, something that's rated at 10 amps, and then that's going to work. The voltage is the same, it's just the amount of electricity that we can feed to all these different locomotives is going to be higher. So anyway, that, that interesting relationship between voltage, amperage, and resistance, because going forward we'll be talking about that a lot as we're wiring different things and doing different things and we need to understand exactly what that is. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm hoping you're not finding this series boring. If you're not and you want to follow along, the easy way to follow along is to become a subscriber and then set your little notification bell to be notified every time one of these is uploaded. An easy way to subscribe if you're not a subscriber is to click on the upcoming blue button. Are we ready for that? Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, I'm not sure how you found this video on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Sunday with some of that fun. See you then. Bye-bye.